<clears throat> Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you very much for your attendance here today. Um, the world changed in February uh, 22, and I think it would be fair to say that if we were looking at the Commission's report again, we would probably be looking at level of ambition three rather than level of ambition two. It strikes me that it's an awful long time to 2028 to build a budget up to 1.5 billion. We should probably be looking at a budget of somewhere around about 3 billion uh, with a properly resourced Air Corps, a properly resourced Navy. Uh, as my colleague Carl Berry said, we can't see what's up there and we haven't a clue what's down there. Uh, so, I mean, I, I, I don't know where we, where we are going with that. But to get on to the, the psychometric testing um, element, which is something I hadn't intended to bring up until Deputy Staunton brought it up, but there's a move away from psychometric testing into skills-based testing, which is far, far more appropriate for a defence force. And I, I, I would invite you to have a look at the psychometric testing and just see how, how out of touch it is. Uh, really. I want to talk very briefly on pay. The system in this country has been to have national pay agreements and a one size fits all. And I would ask you, Chair, would you agree that one size does not fit all, particularly when you're looking at people who uh, are available to the state 24 hours a day, seven days a week? Um, uh, I'm not so sure that it's, it's, a, it's a great idea trying to apply the same standards that you apply to a clerical officer, for example, to a recruit in the Defence Forces. Also, the issue of mandatory retirement at 50 is causing um, serious problems. Uh, I'm sorry, now, I have a few things to throw at you in this whole area. Mm -hmm. We're also talking about situations where we need to bring back specific skills to the defence forces, like artificers, for example, or marine engineers and the like. None of them want to go back when they retire, although there is a need for them, because they're hit with pension abatement. Abatement was brought in for the super, uber, well-paid, high-level civil servants, abating uh, private, former private soldiers or NCOs for me is, is, is a bit of a killer altogether and it is a complete disincentive for those who could still serve the state in a civilian capacity. Now turning to the Commission, um, there was the Commission considered an urgent requirement to put in place a codified top-down capability development uh, planning process. Um, is there now a process in place? I understand that only one civil servant has been in place in the new capability development branch, and not a single military officer has been posted here yet. Uh, is that true? And if it is, when do you expect that uh, the, the um, capability development planning office will be fully staffed? Going back to the RDF, the Reserve Defence Forces, we had the uh, civil defence in here some time ago, and they have absolutely no problem recruiting people. And they requirement to become a member is simply a question of turning up. That's the way it used to be with the RDF, that you simply turned up uh, and you went through a training process uh, and you, you became a, a Reserve Defence Force member. I can't understand why things have changed. So what I'm asking now is, is there a, a, a commitment from government to appropriate funding to support the regeneration of the Reserve Defence Forces, which for all intents and purposes is almost at a point where it doesn't exist? And have the measures been put in place for this plan? Um, again, uh, the, the Commission recommended that an immediate focus be given to the standing down of a number of current Defence Forces um, aid to the civil power taskings, uh, which no longer seem justified in the current security situation. Uh, do you realise, Chair, that not a single aid to the civil power uh, tasking has ceased in the last 16 months since the report was published? And if it has, I'm not aware of it. Um, the next thing that's uh, of concern to me, and I hope I'm not going too fast here for you, I've always been accused of speaking too fast. Can um, I just ask you uh, to repeat the previous, the last point you've just made? Sorry, say that again. Can you just repeat the last point? Oh yeah, the aid to the civil power. It's my understanding that there was to be an immediate focus on that. 
to get rid of the aid to the civil power taskings that are no longer requirement given the security situation in the country. But it appears that not one of those tasking, taskings has been stood down. And, you know, if we're committing troops to things that are no longer necessary, that's a further disincentive to people to remain in the defence forces if they're doing something that is, uh, they see themselves as, as wasteful. Now, the Commission um, recommended a whole of government maritime services, air and maritime services, needs analysis to take place in the short term. Okay? This was specifically recommended in order to avoid unnecessary duplication and capability development across different departments and agencies and to ensure greater coherence across government and delivery of greater value to the taxpayer. I'm interested to know, given that we've just been told today that the next search and rescue contract uh, preferred bidder has been accepted, and I congratulate them and I tell them I'll be watching them like a hawk, but there was no, apparently, no cross-departmental thinking on this that I can actually say I'm satisfied with at a proper level. The same applies if you look, for example, in our naval service, we have revenue commissioners, we have naval, all going to sea. Uh, there's huge concern amongst sailors I'm speaking to uh, about the two new ships that were bought. They're, they're telling me that they are not suitable for the tasking for which they'll be made. Now, I'm, I'm no expert in maritime issues, but I would be somewhat concerned um, that you know, was a full appraisal. Were the Navy, the people involved in the purchase of those ships, did they recommend the purchase of those ships? Um, we could go to the bother of, of FOIing it, but it would, it's just one that needs to be answered. Dealing with um, serving members, um, serving members, and I'm aware of some today, for example, tomorrow we, we commemorate the shooting of Billy Cadian in, in uh, the Lebanon. And people who served with him are today still serving, some of them, suffering from PTSD, and from what I understand, there is no real care in the area of PTSD, uh, which is something that has happened in most armies around the world. It has taken them time to come to terms with it. And the, the last uh, issue, sorry, two last things. You speak about MSAM, the pensionability of military service allowance. Are you aware of the fact that when it was brought in, it excluded a whole raft of people that had been paid uh, military service allowance while serving, but it was not made pensionable for them, which to me is a disgrace. These men mainly served this state, were in full receipt of military service allowance, and because of a date in the calendar, they were excluded from the pensionability of it. And the last one is one I didn't want to bring up, and that was the independent review that you adverted to in your report. I think it is extremely distressing to members of the Defence Forces and former members, and I'm a former member myself, that the report has been taken as de facto uh, fact, when in fact all it is is an exploration of what happened. Would you accept that until such a time that there is a sworn inquiry and evidence taken under the normal rules, rules of evidence that we should not be playing up the independent review group a report, it, we should just accept it as something that needs further investigation? Uh, I hope that's not too many questions. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to preempt what, what, what the chair of the uh, implementation oversight group is going to say in response to Senator Crockwell, but uh, it does strike me that there are some issues here, at uh, the detail of which uh, mightn't be over uh, the the uh, the work program uh, of the committee. Uh, but in any event, I'll, I'll, I'll allow Ms. Cinnamon to yeah. respond. Just, and just, and just, I, I was just going to say, Chairman, I mean, my role as chair of that implementation oversight group is a high level role in terms of ensuring the, the, the implementation. Uh, I haven't uh, the level of detail on a number of the issues, which clearly from your own direct experience, etc., that, uh, that you have. So a number of the points that you're raising, uh, I'm very happy to bring back 
and uh, discussed both with the Defence Forces and Department of Defence, but I, I, I'm, I'm not... Uh, no, know, no, I, 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 I fully so, accept that yeah. I needed to put those on the yeah. record that we get answers for yeah. them. I fully accept uh, okay. it may not be in your gift to answer today. And on your, your, your first point in terms of the, the budget and three billion versus the budget that has been agreed, obviously uh, the, the level of ambition too has been accepted, but it has been accepted as let's call it, uh, you know, a fir it doesn't mean that at a point in time level of ambition three will not be, is, is off the table. It is, it's, it's, you know, level of ambition two. I think that's a, a quite a stretch to get to that uh, and, and we'll take it from there. So it, 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 it doesn't mean that the other uh, isn't the case. Your point on psychometric versus skills, again, you know, uh, I, I don't think it's an either or. Uh, I mean, I, I've, I've seen the value of psychometric testing uh, and I've, I also am a big believer in, in the, the need for this skills testing as well. So I, I you know, I, I take that. Uh, in terms of one size fits all, and certainly uh, there are, uh, you know, I think that's a constant issue, not just in in military versus the public service, but across the public service. And certainly, things like military, you know, service allowances and all the rest of it are accepting that there are different uh, requirements from 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 different uh, uh, different roles, both within the public, across the public service, and across the military. Uh, the mandatory retirement issue is something again. I I I, I don't have the, uh, uh, the the detail. Of, well, I can see the implications of it just in terms of the people who are eligible, uh, and it, it 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 is something which again I I would bring back. Um, the uh, let me just see. Just the 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 the, the, the capability development issue that you've raised. I mean, a process has been put in place. Uh, you're right that at this point in time, defence force people have not been appointed uh, to that body, but those appointments are are uh, in the immediate term. It is something which is very live as 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 we speak. Um, but. Uh, Reserve defence. Reserve defence. Uh, have no problem. The, yeah, the civil defence have no problem recruiting. Um, uh, and certainly, I mean, the budget, the 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 government and Tallister have accepted uh, the the need to get get to level of ambition too, which has substantial budget increases. The only year that has been uh, so far since then, uh, 2023, has seen record increases in terms of budgets. And so I certainly, you know, believe that the the commitment of the Tonister to uh, seeing this plan implemented is is absolutely you know uh, you know evident from all that he has said and from the the first year's budget that has been provided. Uh, whole of government maritime service to be developed again. I I I, I I'm, I'm going to have to I'll report that back. I don't I don't have a, an answer on that. Uh, our, nor can I answer the two what role the the navy had in terms of the selection of the ships that were were selected. I'm assuming that uh, that there was a substantial that it was their decision, but I I, I don't have that specific detail. Uh, uh, the IRG, it, you know, is is not uh, you know it, it, I think it has been a a major report in terms of highlighting issues. But at the same time, I think the 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 Tallinster has been very clear in terms of the steps following it uh, that that are needed, and the report is consistent with a lot of previous uh, reports and you know things which are alluded to in the Commission report, etc. Uh, but I think what we all recognise is there is a substantial need to implement. Uh, cultural change, uh, and and that is a really significant piece relative to the retention issues that we've talked about as well. So, uh, um, have I anything else that I've missed on that? Damon? If I might just come back very quickly on the RDF, um, um, if you take the closure of barracks around the country has meant, for example, if I live in Sligo, yeah, and I want to become a member of the RDF, where do I go? Do I go to Athlone? 
Do I go to Finner Camp or do I go to Duna Melissa in Galway? Um, we have broken the RDF by not having uh, units locally. I remember when I was in the RDF as a very young man, every Tuesday night, every street corner in Galway had fellows standing in uniform waiting to go to their unit, whichever unit they were in, every Sunday morning, the same thing. Uh, I cannot see any incentive for anybody who's living... Uh, 30, 40 miles away from a barracks to be any part of the RDF. And we've got to go back having people located on the ground within the villages. And I, I'm saying that as a piece of advice mm -hmm. more so than anything else. So if I live in Kilkee, there should be uh, soldiers in Kilkee that would run a military base in Kilkee, that type of thing. Yeah, well, I think that's one of the roles for the person who's been appointed to the Office of the Reserve Forces in terms of uh, identifying how we can regenerate it. It is, you know, it's, there's, a, there's a challenge uh, in terms of being able to do that, and it's, it's certainly something that in my role as uh, chairing the oversight group, we will be watching the progress there in terms of what, what's actually happening. But I don't underestimate the challenge. Thank you.